troops. Again. <laughs> Man, I've really got to find new words to start a video with. Today, I'm going to be stating some facts about every single troop in Clash of Clans. That includes Elixir Troops, Dark Elixir, Super Troops, Builder Base, Clan Capital, Heroes, and Pets. Yeah, I really did mean every troop. Also, this is a remake of a video I did two years ago, and the reason is just that there's way more troops now, and some of the facts that I mentioned before are already out of date. So, I went ahead and added way more and replaced some facts. With that being said though, let's get right into it. Let's do this. The Barbarian was the first troop to have a custom skin as part of a hero bundle, the Champion King. Also, at level 6, his idle animation will change. Instead of holding a sword with both hands, he switches to holding it with one. According to the Art of Supercell book, the inspiration for the Archer came from a young Robin Hood inspired girl protagonist that was from another Supercell game that never came out. Also mentioned in the Art of Supercell book, the giant was supposed to be blue. Also, he had four fingers up until 2016. This was done around the time when Supercell started to update troop designs to include five fingers. Oddly enough, the goblin in the tutorial ignores your resource buildings and goes straight to attacking your cannon. They are also one of the only troops in the game that can run across a spring trap fast enough without being affected by it. If there are no wallbreakers left, wallbreakers will attack buildings, but since they do so little damage to anything but walls, they are very ineffective at that. It is also said that wallbreakers are dead builders since they both wear similar hats. Balloons are wallbreakers that got promoted. In August 2014, there was an event where the wizard's image was changed to resemble his appearance from a commercial. He was also cheaper and faster to train. Also, in the game files, the wizard is referred to as Mage. Prior to the September 2014 update, healers in a clan castle used to heal damaged buildings in your base. Also, for those who like a little bit of Clash of Clans lore, it appears she was blind throughout the Clash of Rama YouTube series. For some reason, the dragon drops a human skeleton upon death. Also, when Dark Elixir was first added into the game, it was said that it was made from fossilized dragon bones. Everyone knows the Pekka is a female, but the name Pekka is the Finnish equivalent to the English name Peter. <laughs> she also has the largest death skeleton in the game. The baby dragon is the only troop to appear in both the main village and builder base with no visual change at all. It also seems to explode into dark elixir at death, despite being an elixir troop. The icon and picture of the miner shows him wearing a blue shirt. However, when you train him, you've probably noticed that he's always wearing a red shirt. This is most likely due to his artwork being a reused asset from Clash Royale at the time of release. Before the Electro Dragon was released, the Clash Royale team was split on whether the name of the troop would be Electro Dragon or Electric Dragon. Ultimately, to break the tie, the CEO of Supercell himself was asked which name he preferred, and as a result, Electro Dragon was chosen for both games. This was also one of the only times when the CEO had a direct decision and influence on something creatively. Also, a cool detail, the spikes along the back of the Electro Dragon lights up along their back tail to head one at a time. When all of them are lit up, it shoots lightning right after. This is how you tell exactly when it'll shoot. The Yeti is the only elixir troop in the game to spawn other units, Yeti Mites. Speaking of Yeti Mites, if you run out of them, which is possible by healing a Yeti that's about to run out of them, the basket will appear empty. The Dragon Rider is the only dragon variant that prioritizes defenses. The Electro Titan will fist bump if you tap on their army camp. This is actually a recycled animation that was originally used for the Giants years ago. However, the Giant no longer does this. A minion can outrun an air bomb. The reason why the Hog Rider has a deeper, manlier voice in the game and a high-pitched voice in commercials and animations is because they had already recorded voices for him before he was added into the game. So only in the game is where he does that yeah thing. <laughs> Sorry, that's my best impression. In the game files, the Valkyrie is labeled as Warrior Girl. The Golem was likely inspired by the Promethean from Age of Mythology, as both units are stone creatures that split into two smaller versions of themselves once defeated. The Witch is one of the most sus troops in the game. <laughs> Nah, I'm kidding. But, did you know this isn't her hair? A lot of people seem to confuse her cloak for her hair. But if you look closely in her old card image from Clash Royale, she seems to have about the same hair as a Valkyrie or a Villager. 
The sneak peek picture of the Lava Hound featured its face with the words, I smell fireworks. This is a reference to air defenses, which quite literally use fireworks. The bowler was originally a troop idea for Clash Royale, but being scrapped, it was transferred to Clash of Clans, but ultimately the bowler was added into Clash Royale anyways later on. It's like they couldn't decide where the bowler belonged. The Ice Golem is one of two troops to have different stats when used offensively rather than offensively, the other being the Miner. This is because both of them ended up being too OP in a defensive clan castle. The original concept for the Headhunter appears to have changed quite a bit. From a machine with an elixir tank to a knight, a king, a prince, it's come a long way. The Apprentice Warden is the only troop in the entire game to have an aura that boosts troops' health. Rage Barbarians are said to be raged because they lost their swords, which is also the reason for them using axes instead. The Sneaky Archer seems to be the mini version of an Archer Queen. Both have crossbows and similar cloak abilities. The design of the Boxer Giant was most likely inspired by Lou, the giant from the Clash of Rama series, in Episode 1, when he's trying to fight against a level 10 cannon. This video was made before the Builder Base was announced. Like its home village counterpart, the beta minions sneeze when army camp is tapped on. It appears bombers are fallen master builders as they're both wearing the same headgear. As we said earlier, this is also true for the home village where the wallbreakers have the same hat as the builder. The first part of the cannon cart's description is a reference to its description from Clash Royale. A cannon cart on wheels? Yeah, they're both the same. The Night Witch is the regular witch's sister. She's also the inspiration for that one Mortis skin in Brawl Stars. The skull on the dropship resembles the skull on a witch's staff, referencing its skeleton spawning abilities. In the Builder Base 2.0 update, the Super P.E.K.K.A. was changed to Power P.E.K.K.A. to avoid any confusion with it being a super troop. The Hog Glider was inspired by a scrapped idea for a main village troop called the Goblin Glider that had very similar mechanics. One of the earlier concepts of the Electro Fire Wizard was a Skele Wizard, a wizard in the form of a skeleton that yielded a double-sided staff to change between electricity and fire, and it looked pretty sweet. The Super Barbarian is called Elite Barbarian in the game files. The Super Archer is based on the Magic Archer from Clash Royale. She was also teased in a completely unrelated video for the launch of the Party King skin about three weeks before her release. According to the Super Giant's description, he's cousins with the regular giant. The Sneaky Goblin seems to have been inspired by the Goblin in the Goblin Cage from Clash Royale, and that was inspired by a character in the Clash Rama series. A character who was trying to escape a jail and ended up in the arena in a cage. <laughs> Surprisingly, the Super Wallbreaker's splash radius is smaller than the regular Wallbreaker. Six years ago, during the 5th anniversary Clash Rama special, you can see a balloon being boosted by a rocket, years before the rocket balloon would actually become a thing. The Super Wizard uses the same charge sound as the Electro Dragon. The inspiration for the Super Dragon most likely came from the main boss in the Dragon Lair single player map. In fact, for years before the Super Dragon was released, there were tons of fan concepts of it for a new Super Troop. Because of a glitch, the Inferno Dragon once appeared in the game without a shadow. And according to ClashOfClans.com, the official Clash of Clans website of course, the Headhunter may have stolen it. According to the Autumn 2020 Developer Update video, the Super Minion is inspired by concept sketches of the Yeti, where the Yeti was originally going to be a bigger, chunkier, and beefier minion called the Giant Minion. Here are some original concept designs for the Super Valkyrie, which went through a number of changes before they finally settled on the design we know today. The Super Witch was leaked before its announcement by, get this, a developer. My favorite, um, I think it is the Super Witch. What? The Super Witch. I don't even know what that is. Strangely, the Ice Hound is the only air troop in the game to be shown with a grass patch under it <laughs> for some reason. It is also unknown why it has a scarf in the artwork, but nowhere else. <laughs> it's kind of cute though. The boulder the Super Bowler has bores a great resemblance to Spike from Brawl Stars, just 
purple without limbs. <laughs> well, that's kind of creepy. The Super Miner was most likely inspired by the Mighty Miner Champion in Clash Royale. They both have a hand drill that increases its damage over time and both leave an explosive behind. The Super Hog Rider is voiced by community manager Darian, both the hog and the rider. The Battle Ram first appeared in Clash of Clans in the 2017 Clashversary when the Builder left the village, and during the first week of the event, the Barbarian became the Builder, allowing temporary access to the Battle Ram. Five years later, it would return as a permanent clan capital troop. The Minion Horde has the same 3D card render as the Minion card in Clash Royale. Back when the Skeleton Barrel was only a limited time troop for Halloween, it did not have a preferred target. In contrast, the Clan Capital variant targets defenses just like its Clash Royale counterpart. The Flying Fortress is one of two Clan Capital troops to use 3D models in the field, the other being the Mountain Golem. The Siege Cart uses the old design for the Cannon Cart from before the Boulder Base 2.0 update. Hog Raiders have the most legs of any troop, with a total of 18 when you include the Riders and the Hogs. I don't know why you would ever need to know that, but now you know. The Mountain Golem, along with the Flying Fortress, are in its own separate subcategory called Mega Troops. According to Supercell, the Barbarian King lives in the Town Hall. He also, like other troops, used to have four fingers. The Archer Queen's crossbow fires out three arrows, despite that it's designed to only be loaded with a single arrow at a time. <laughs> How are you doing that? Before its remodel in June 2019, the Grand Warden bore a great resemblance to the late television host Lee Young. Because of this, he is commonly called Lee Young King among Chinese players. I also have no idea if I'm saying the name correctly. <laughs> The Royal Champion was originally going to be called Valkyrie Queen, and according to a developer, the design was inspired by Xena, Warrior Princess, and the Wakanda Warriors. The reason the Battle Machine doesn't wander around the base as the other heroes in the main village do is because it's a machine and not a living being. That also explains why when you move the altar, it'll move the entire thing. He doesn't just walk there like the other heroes do. The Battlecopter's first sentence in its description is a reference to the famous line in the first Predator movie. Get to the chopper! Also, some of the early concepts for the copter were a flying crusher, stone dropper, heel copter, and more crazy things that all seem pretty cool. According to a video by Supercell, Lassie is a hound. It also appears that the P.E.K.K.A. is the owner of Lassie, according to a Mother's Day tweet. Before the official announcement of the Electro Owl, it was teased in a video and most believed it was a new spell since pets weren't introduced yet and no one knew that they were supposed to be a thing. According to the Mighty Yak's description, it is basically a animal version of the Wall Wrecker. The Unicorn is the slowest moving pet in the game. Frosty is the only pet that can summon units. In the French version of the game, Diggy is called Pablo. <laughs> That's kind of funny, Pablo. <laughs> The Poison Lizard is the fastest non-spell troop in the home village. The Phoenix in Clash of Clans came out in Clash Royale the same month, however they have different designs. So guys, that's pretty much it for this video, that is a fact for every single troop in the game. Yo man, some of these troops literally have no facts. <laughs> you would not believe how hard it was to find a fact for all of these troops. Some of these troops nobody cares about, or they're too new, and there's just not enough information. But I tried my best to find something at least. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hey, if you want to watch a similar video, I did do one of these for buildings a while back. It'll be right here in the left side. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gaming out. Peace!